I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about what makes an ex come back. So this is a big topic, obviously. When you're going through a breakup, one of the things that you're constantly evaluating and thinking about is what can I do to have another chance with this person? Mm -hmm. What can I do to get them back? How can I improve my chances in the situation? And when you're thinking about like the situation, obviously you're beating yourself up and mm -hmm. you're thinking about everything that you did wrong in the relationship. And since the breakup, you're obviously seeing things, oh my gosh, I wish I hadn't have said that or done that. Mm -hmm, exactly. And you're constantly, you know, beating yourself up over what happened. And that's totally understand, uh, understandable. I did all those things. And you're just constantly sitting there thinking like, if I did all these awful things, why would they give me another chance, right? right? So what makes an ex come back? What is it that happens that can actually turn a situation around? Obviously, every situation is different, but there are certain things that I think work across the board, and we're going to mm -hmm. be talking about those today. So for me, the biggest thing is love. And attachment. And I don't think there's anything that's more powerful than love and attachment. Mm -hmm. And when you really care about somebody, they don't just disappear and you're unconscious. They don't just stop thinking about you, right? Right. When somebody has a big impact on you and changes you, it's going to be very hard to get over that person immediately. So right now, if you're heartbroken thinking, oh, my ex has probably forgotten about me, that's not the case. With attachment, and with how that connection works, it doesn't just go away immediately. Yeah, they have a big, big impact on you. Mm -hmm. And you have a big impact on them. And things can change, the situation can change, but you have to leave them alone. Exactly. People really do need that space. And right now when you're grieving and your, your grief process is very real, very visceral, you might be feeling physical symptoms of that grief. It can be hard to imagine that your ex is also going to go through that process of grief. It's just not gonna be at the same timeline as you are going through it right now. So you really have to give time for that process, that grief process to start with your ex. And in giving them that time, you wanna make sure that you don't interrupt their grief process. So I know Margaret has talked about this before on the channel, but when you do reach out and break no contact and contact your ex first before they contact you, you're interrupting their processing of the breakup. So essentially they have to start all over and you don't want that if you are wanting your ex to miss you again. Yeah, because in that space, it allows things to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like allows them to grieve you, allows to feel the consequences of the breakup. Exactly. If people don't feel the consequences of the breakup, then it's like, well, I can do whatever I want and mm -hmm. I can still have that person. No, right. they need to feel the consequences of that. And, you know, oftentimes when they see that you're leaving them alone and they can process and start to miss you, they can realize that they were part of the problems as well. Right. Right. And that things weren't maybe as bad as they felt. Because a lot of times a problem just feels worse than what it really is. Mm -hmm. And by having some distance from it, they can see that those things that got on their nerves about you or that were causing issues, it really wasn't worth losing the relationship over. We are hardwired to want connections. Mm -hmm. It's how we feel safe. It's how we feel alive. 
and human beings are very social creatures and we're not meant to be isolated like animals, like turtles that live in their shell. You know, we're meant to be around other people. And so we don't feel safe when we're out of that relationship and they don't feel safe. Neither people feel really safe or good mm -hmm. about that. And they start to, in time, feel that anxiety, feel that separation anxiety, which is so critical for your ex to experience. Mm -hmm. But if you keep reaching out and they know I could still get this person back, I can still have them, and they don't feel that consequence, then it's going to decrease their desire to get back with you. They're going to not feel like, you know, there's any real consequence for what they've done here mm -hmm. and just kind of kind of go along with what they've been wanting to do. Exactly. They can't grieve you if they haven't lost you. So you want them to feel that loss. Another thing that this space causes is also mystery. Mm -hmm. And that mystery is enticing. They will wonder about you. What is he doing? What is she doing? Who is she with? You want them to start to wonder and be curious about you. And if you're constantly posting on social media about the pain and the hurt that you're going through, mm -hmm. which I can totally understand why you would do that, they're gonna see that on their feed and they're not gonna be wondering about you. They're gonna know exactly how you're feeling. So And that you're not over them. Exactly. And every time they see you on their feed, they're not gonna get positive feelings mm -hmm. from that. So you want to be conscious of how you're putting yourself out there and how you're appearing to your ex and also creating that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ultimately, you want them to realize that they have to live with their decision. Mm -hmm. And you want them, you know, to want things with you again without feeling guilty. A lot of times right. we think if we make them feel bad about it. Mm -hmm that they're gonna want you back. Well, it's not for the right reasons. You right. don't want people to want you back out of guilt. Mm -hmm. You know, you want them to feel like they're experiencing the pain and the hurt that you are. But when you don't give them that space, they don't feel like that, right? Exactly. So that's a big one. Um, now, another big thing that makes somebody wanna come back and repair things with you is that they actually see change this is a big one mm -hmm. your ex knows that you have issues mm -hmm. they've dated you for some time they've gotten to know you they probably know things about you that you don't even know about yourself right right i'm sure that plenty of my girlfriends could tell you things that they would expect for me or know that mm -hmm. i would do that i didn't even know i was doing mm -hmm. right we all do things like that yep. and so they kn know you've got some stuff that you got to work through and you want to think about the complaints that they had in the relationship and how you can compare it to other relationships as well that you've had and see if you're seeing patterns and right. fix those things. Mm -hmm. You don't want to ignore what actually happened in the relationship. Chances are that your ex had some reason for breaking up with you, some types of complaints in the relationship, mm -hmm. and you don't want to ignore those. You want to show your ex that you have considered that, and that's going to be seen as respectful and validating their experience throughout the relationship, mm -hmm. which is going to be essential for getting them back and for having them desire you back. Yeah, you want to show them that you know, now this is not, I don't want you to reach out to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying when they've reached out and you get a chance in front of them again, right. you want to show them that you've worked on those issues, mm -hmm. you've made improvements, and that you're not going to let those issues continue to hurt the relationship and the connection again. And, you know, by doing that, they can then see that you have taken everything that they said seriously. Mm -hmm that you do care about their feedback or their complaints and that you took them to heart. Right. You want to focus on being their best option. So you already have this foundational connection and you want to show them that if they do re-enter a relationship with you, mm -hmm. it's going to be better than the first one. Mm -hmm. That's the goal here. So it's also not a blame game. This is not about saying, you know, I take all the blame for everything that happened in the relationship or it's all your fault. This is about taking responsibility, which doesn't put others down, but it inspires improvement. It says, okay, where can we do things better? And that's where your focus should be.
Yeah, because a lot of times people will get back together and, you know, they kind of fall right back into mm -hmm. those old patterns. And if that happens, they're just going to be so frustrated and be like, you see, I knew this wasn't going to work. I gave this another chance. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same things over and over again. And, of, uh, uh, you know, you've heard them say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over mm -hmm. again. And if you get back together and that's what's happening, they're just going to be so much more likely to say, you see, I knew it was going to be more of the same things that I couldn't deal with or live with. Right. And many relationship issues are rooted in childhood attachment issues. Mm -hmm. So we have hundreds of videos on this channel, Craig and Margaret. They are a huge resource that you can learn from. Trust me, work through those issues. Think about your childhood, mm -hmm. the experiences that you've had. They're inevitably going to affect your relationships. So the more that you work on these things, and it's, it's a very personal thing. It's going to differ from person to person. But the more you work on those, that's going to reflect on your new relationship, whether that be with your ex or somebody new. Yeah, you want to kind of, in this time, this period of no contact, reinvent yourself mm -hmm. and you're going to do that by looking at your family history your attachment issues what triggers you give you skills in the relationships and like vicky said we have almost a thousand videos covering many of these topics mm -hmm. so there's really no excuse for not doing the work but what a lot of you do is you think that because right now it's hopeless you you stop doing the work you mm -hmm. stop w learning the skills but you want to have the attitude of, I'm going to do this for myself. That's really the healthiest attitude yeah. of doing the work for yourself. If you're not at that place yet, it's okay at first to use your ex as the reason and the motivation. Mm -hmm. But many people will find out their ex is dating somebody new mm -hmm. and they're like, that. they give up, they get depressed, and they think that's it, it's the end of the world. That's simply not the case. Many right. times... People will start dating other people. People need time to really miss you and to believe that things are going to change. And they also got to take a look at themselves mm -hmm. and realize that they were part of the problems too. Yep. That's a big deal. It's very important to reinvent yourself to have your ex feel a newfound attraction to you. So this can include having hobbies, digging into your element, maybe things that you enjoyed even before the relationship. Career yeah, is a big exactly. one. If they see that you are going back to school or something like that. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you're grieving, it can be really difficult to think about yourself going out there and doing something that you enjoy when you're feeling so much pain on the inside. But slowly and step by step, maybe even doing something small just to get started, something that you enjoy, painting a picture, it can be anything. Just getting the wheels moving is going to help you get to that place where you can show your ex, I have not only changed by working on my issues, but I have a passion. I have you know, excitement about life, mm -hmm. and that's going to be very inspiring to them and attractive to them. Ambition is yes. big. Yeah. Ambition. So you want your ex to see a new side of you because chances are throughout the relationship and during the breakup, they probably had this idea of, I already know what to expect out of this person. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in a relationship with this person for a while. You know, I can see what the trajectory of this relationship will look like if it continues. And it feels stale and yep. they don't want to continue that. He's exactly. just going to play video games every mm -hmm. night. Yeah. So by reinventing yourself and really digging into your passion, you want to shatter this idea. You want to show them that that's not true, yeah. that a different relationship with them is possible. So I actually have a story about this. Mm -hmm. And with my very first boyfriend, mm -hmm. we... Who we call lion -O. Yes, that's his weird said... nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I said even... I, I knew this guy from way back in the mm -hmm. day. Um, I, he looked like one of the Thundercats to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said he looked like lion -O. But we used to play music together because mm -hmm. he's a musician. And I remember during the times that we were dating, I took a lot of initiative to get us to even play like at a local farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember taking a lot of initiative in the relationship. I even remember helping him sign up for community college mm -hmm. just because that drive wasn't there. And I always felt like I was picking up, you know, his slack. Later down the road, after we broke up, I'm seeing on social media that he's out playing at big venues and I'm feeling extremely proud for him, mm -hmm. but also attracted to him because it's like, 
where was this throughout the whole relationship? You know, it, it, he really showed me his potential mm -hmm. by doing that. And that was a big shock factor to me. So if you're able to do that with your ex and, you know, show them that not only do you have the potential, but you have the ability to make that potential a reality, that's going to leave an impression on them. Yeah, because you weren't feeling attracted to him until you saw that, right? Right, right. It really felt like I underestimated him. Yeah. I was like, wow, you know, I, I should have believed in him more. Yeah, exactly. That is a really big last point mm -hmm. that we wanted to get to is you want your ex to feel like they've underestimated mm -hmm. you, that they had these doubts. And, and you also want them to be frustrated and, and kind of angry, like, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe now mm -hmm. they're making all these changes and now they're doing all these things that I wanted them to do when we were together. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you want yeah. them to feel like they're missing out of the potential mm -hmm. that they saw in you that maybe you weren't really... Uh, pushing forward with in life, but now you're doing it and now they're missing out on that. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that is a really big thing. So when you focus on a well-rounded uh, kind of strategy mm -hmm. while you're in no contact, and many of you are just watching no contact videos, that's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. It's what you do with that time, mm -hmm. like the workbooks or the course or right. getting into therapy. Exactly. All of those things are going to help you to grow so your ex takes another look at you and you've truly changed. Mm -hmm. Like you've really done the work. You're not just saying you've changed. Oh, I, I've, you know, you've probably told them that you were gonna change in the past. And if you say it again, they're just gonna be like, oh yeah, that's great, uh, you've changed, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. I've heard you say that 25 times. Mm -hmm. But when you really do it, they're going to be the ones saying it to you, you know? Yeah, exactly. But you got to give them time and space mm -hmm. to, de to do that, to grieve, to miss you, to feel that separation anxiety, to reevaluate their mistakes in the relationship, mm -hmm. to think about the things that they did wrong, to process all that stuff, and to get the anxiety of losing you. But you can't keep pushing forward with them. You want to have faith in the process. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly scary and overwhelming and confusing, and we understand all that. But if you focus on the right things, it's going to pay off in the end. Either your ex is going to come back and they're going to see a new side of you. They're going to see a lot of things that are attractive, right. just like Vicky did here with Lion-O. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to have the skills to have much healthier relationships in the future. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, you could go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype, and Coach Victoria will continue to train with us. I'll be here. And you'll see her in lots of videos. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to askcraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.